Hey there, welcome to day number 360. I have great news today. Our God reigns. And as you already know, His Word is a unity. It is so cohesive. And we see that again today in our readings of Zechariah 10 and 11, Isaiah 63, and Revelation 17. Let's turn to Zechariah 10. As we have seen before, the Lord loves and delights to give new names. In Zechariah 8, he said, Then Jerusalem will be called the faithful city. The mountain of the Lord of heaven's armies will be called the holy mountain. In Zechariah 9, we read the verse Matthew quotes in chapter 21 about Jesus coming riding on the foal of a donkey. The verse is also alluded to in John 12:15, and we heard this verse about the new Jerusalem. On that day the Lord their God will rescue his people just as a shepherd rescues his sheep. They will sparkle in his land like jewels in a crown. Zechariah 10 Heading The Lord Promises Deliverance Zechariah Speaks Ask the Lord for rain in the spring of the year. It is the Lord who sends rain clouds and showers, making the fields green for everyone. People consult idols and fortune tellers, but the answers they get are lies and nonsense. Some interpret dreams, but only mislead you. The comfort they give is useless. So the people wander about like lost sheep. They are in trouble because they have no leader. The Lord says, I am angry with those foreigners who rule my people, and I'm going to punish them. The people of Judah are mine, and I, the Lord Almighty, will take care of them. They will be my powerful war horses. From among them will come rulers, leaders, and commanders to govern my people. The people of Judah will be victorious like soldiers who trample their enemies in the mud of the streets. They will fight because the Lord is with them, and they will defeat even the enemy cavalry. I will make the people of Judah strong. I will rescue the people of Israel. I will have compassion on them and bring them all back home. They will be as though I had never rejected them. I am the Lord their God. I will answer their prayers. The people of Israel will be strong like soldiers, happy like those who have been drinking wine. Their descendants will remember this victory and be glad because of what the Lord has done. I will call my people and gather them together. I will rescue them and make them as numerous as they used to be. Though I have scattered them among the nations, yet in far-off places they will remember me. They and their children will survive and return home together. From Egypt and Assyria I will bring them home and settle them in their own country. I will settle them in Gilead and Lebanon also. The whole land will be filled with people. When they pass through their sea of trouble, I, the Lord, will strike the waves, and the depths of the Nile will go dry. Proud Assyria will be humbled, and mighty Egypt will lose her power. I will make my people strong. They will worship and obey me. The Lord has spoken. Zechariah 11 Heading The Fall of the Tyrants Zechariah speaks. Open your doors, Lebanon, so that fire can burn down your cedar trees. Weep and wail, cypress trees, the cedars have fallen, those glorious trees have been destroyed. Weep and wail, oaks of Bashan, the dense forest has been cut down. The rulers cry out in grief, their glory is gone. 
listen to the roaring of the lions. Their forest home along the Jordan is destroyed. Heading Two Shepherds The Lord my God said to me, Act the part of the shepherd of a flock of sheep that are going to be butchered. Their owners kill them and go unpunished. They sell the meat and say, Praise the Lord, we're rich. Even their own shepherds have no pity on them. Parentheses. The Lord said, I will no longer pity anyone on earth. I myself will put all people in the power of their rulers. Their rulers will devastate the earth, and I will not save it from their power. End parentheses. Zechariah speaks. Those who bought and sold the sheep hired me, and I became the shepherd of the sheep that were going to be butchered. I took two sticks, one I called favor and the other unity, and I took care of the flock. I lost patience with three other shepherds who hated me, and I got rid of them all in a single month. Then I said to the flock, I will not be your shepherd any longer. Let those die who are to die. Let those be destroyed who are to be destroyed. Those who are left will destroy one another. Then I took the stick called favor and broke it to cancel the covenant which the Lord had made with all the nations. So the covenant was canceled on that day. Those who bought and sold the sheep were watching me, and they knew that the Lord was speaking through what I did. I said to them, If you are willing, give me my wages, but if not, keep them. So they paid me thirty pieces of silver as my wages. The Lord said to me, Put them in the temple treasury. So I took the thirty pieces of silver, the magnificent sum they thought I was worth, and put them in the temple treasury. Then I broke the second stick, the one called Unity, and the unity of Judah and Israel was shattered. Then the Lord said to me, Once again act the part of a shepherd, this time a worthless one. I have put a shepherd in charge of my flock, but he does not help the sheep that are threatened by destruction. Nor does he look for the lost or heal those that are hurt, or feed the healthy. Instead, he eats the meat of the fattest sheep and tears off their hoofs. That worthless shepherd is doomed. He has abandoned his flock. War will totally destroy his power. His arm will wither, and his right eye will go blind. Let's turn now to Isaiah 63. In chapter 62, we read promises like what I shared above about the Lord giving names. Never again will you be called the forsaken city or the desolate land. Your new name will be the city of God's delight and the bride of God. For the Lord delights in you and will claim you as his bride. And similarly, at the end of the chapter, Look, your Savior is coming. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. They will be called the holy people, and the people redeemed by the Lord, and Jerusalem will be known as the desirable place, and the city no longer forsaken. We will see the fulfillment of all this in the last chapters of Revelation. Isaiah 63, Heading, The Lord's Victory Over the Nations Who is this coming from the city of Bozorah in Edom? Who is this so splendidly dressed in red, marching along in power and strength? It is the Lord, powerful to save coming to announce his victory. Isaiah asks, Why is his clothing so red, like that of someone who tramples grapes to make wine? The Lord answers, I have trampled the nations like grapes, 
and no one came to help me. I trampled them in my anger, and their blood has stained all my clothing. I decided that the time to save my people had come. It was time to punish their enemies. I was amazed when I looked and saw that there was no one to help me. But my anger made me strong, and I won the victory myself. In my anger I trampled whole nations and shattered them. I poured out their lifeblood on the ground. Heading The Lord's Goodness to Israel Isaiah Speaks I will tell of the Lord's unfailing love. I praise Him for all He has done. He has richly blessed the people of Israel because of His mercy and constant love. The Lord said, They are my people. They will not deceive me. And so he saved them from all their suffering. It was not an angel, but the Lord himself who saved them. In his love and compassion, he rescued them. He had always taken care of them in the past, but they rebelled against him and made his Holy Spirit sad. So the Lord became their enemy and fought against them. But then they remembered the past, the days of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and they asked, Where now is the Lord who saved the leaders of his people from the sea? Where is the Lord who gave his spirit to Moses? Where is the Lord who by his power did great things through Moses, dividing the waters of the sea and leading his people through the water to win everlasting fame for himself? Led by the Lord, they were as sure-footed as wild horses and never stumbled. As cattle are led into a fertile valley, so the Lord gave his people rest. He led his people and brought honor to his name. Heading A Prayer for Mercy and Help Lord, Look upon us from heaven where you live in your holiness and glory. Where is your great concern for us? Where is your power? Where are your love and compassion? Don't ignore us. You are our Father. Our ancestors Abraham and Jacob do not acknowledge us, but you, Lord, are our Father, the one who has always rescued us. Why do you let us stray from your ways? Why do you make us so stubborn that we turn away from you? Come back for the sake of those who serve you, for the sake of the people who have always been yours. We, your holy people, were driven out by our enemies for a little while. They trampled down your sanctuary. You treat us as though you had never been our ruler, as though we had never been your people. And now we turn to Revelation 17. In chapter 16, we heard all seven of the bold judgments. At the time this judgment happens and the bowls are poured out on the earth, It seems that 100% of the people are opposed to God. No one repents when the judgments happen, but instead curse God, and there are preparations for a final battle of Armageddon with God. However, God's voice from the throne says that it is finished. This seems to refer to the punishment against Babylon. In John's day, Babylon was a code word among Christians for the city of Rome, the capital city of the empire, which was built on seven hills. In our day, Babylon pictures the united evil world system supported by commerce. Revelation 17 Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came to me and said, Come, and I will show you how the famous prostitute is to be punished, that great city that is built near many rivers. 
The kings of the earth practiced sexual immorality with her, and the people of the world became drunk from drinking the wine of her immorality. The Spirit took control of me, and the angel carried me to a desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a red beast that had names insulting to God written all over it. The beast had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and covered with gold ornaments, precious stones, and pearls. In her hand she held a cup full of obscene and filthy things, the result of her immorality. On her forehead was written a name that has a secret meaning, Great Babylon, the mother of all prostitutes and perverts in the world. And I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of God's people and the blood of those who were killed because they had been loyal to Jesus. When I saw her, I was completely amazed. The angel asked me, Why are you amazed? I will tell you the secret meaning of the woman and of the beast that carries her, the beast with seven heads and ten horns. The beast was once alive, but lives no longer. It is about to come up from the abyss and will go off to be destroyed. The people living on earth whose names have not been written down before the creation of the world in the book of the living will be amazed as they look at the beast. It was once alive, now it no longer lives, but it will reappear. This calls for wisdom and understanding. The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. They are also seven kings. Five of them have fallen, one still rules, and the other one has not yet come. When he comes, he must rule only a little while, and the beast that was once alive but lives no longer is itself an eighth king, who is one of the seven and is going off to be destroyed. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet begun to rule, but who will be given authority to rule as kings for one hour with the beast. These ten all have the same purpose, and they give their power and authority to the beast. They will fight against the Lamb, but the Lamb, together with his called, chosen, and faithful followers, will defeat them, because he is Lord of lords and King of kings. The angel also said to me, The waters you saw on which the prostitute sits are nations, peoples, races, and languages. The ten horns you saw and the beast will hate the prostitute. They will take away everything she has and leave her naked. They will eat her flesh and destroy her with fire. For God has placed in their hearts the will to carry out his purpose by acting together and giving to the beast their power to rule until God's words come true. The woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we praise you as the cornerstone rejected by the builders, and the good shepherd rejected by the leaders of the people. Thirty pieces of silver was the magnificent sum that they paid for you, and it was thrown into the temple. How amazing is your word, Lord! But even so, we live in a world where increasingly favor and unity have been destroyed. We cry out to you like Isaiah and say, Lord, look upon us from heaven where you live in your holiness and glory. Where is your great concern for us? Where is your power like you showed through Moses? Where is your love and compassion? 
Don't let us be so stubborn. Because we look forward to the time when you alone will trample the grapes in the winepress of your anger. You alone will win the victory. You will indeed show your awesome power. So while we wait and live in Babylon, give us the wisdom and righteousness of Daniel. Give us the power to be your witnesses like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so that we won't bow before the emperor's statue when the music of the world plays.